All right, guys, so I know on unit eight, I spent a lot of time for, on surface area. But the way we started it was just with just one figure. Not the whole surface area, it was just one figure. So the first thing we have are triangles. The important measurement in triangles is the 90 degrees, which if you notice is made by three and five from one. I know this dotted line right here it is, if we were to extend the three, where would it be? So for the area of this triangle, I'm just gonna go one half times three times 5.1. That's it. Right, one half times three times 5.1. You multiply across and you should get um, get my calculator for that. You get 7.65? All right, so my area should be 7.65. That's it. So for a triangle, the important is the 90 degrees. I know we have triangles in surface area, but this is how I started you guys, with just a triangle. Then we have rectangles. So then we have a rectangle. For a rectangle, I'm looking at the two numbers across the 90 degrees, which in this case are 7 and 12. And I'm just going to go 7 times 12. There's no half on this one. It's just 7 times 12, which is 84. That's it. I know when I covered this part, you guys were like, yeah, this is not a bad chapter. Well, it's the easy is not bad. Because I knew we were going to use this for surface area. Right, we use rectangles. We use triangles. So uh, this is how I started, you guys. Then let me go to question number nine. Where's my mouse? Question number nine, it says, find the area of each, use your calculated value of pi, round your answer to the nearest tenth. So the area of a circle, since my radius is eight, I have to go eight squared, because the radius is eight, have to go eight squared times pi. So your calculator should have a, a key for pi. If you don't have a pi, use 3.14 for it. So I'm going to go 8 times 8 times pi. And you should get like 201.0619. But I have it rounded to the nearest tenth. So I'm going to call this 201.1. Because I run it to the nearest tenth, which means one decimal place. Like I said, if you have a, a value for pi, use that, that key. Like if you don't have the key for pi, use 3.14. For the worksheet, if you use one or the other, there will be some numbers will, that will vary. Like if you use 3.14 instead of pi, you will get like 201.0. So in order for us to not be different, for tomorrow in the test, instead of saying use your calculator's value of pi, I'm going to say use 3.14 for tomorrow. That way we all have the same thing. So once again, for pi, I'm going to use 3.14 on the test. All right, any questions up until 12? Then I introduce you guys to number 13. Let me erase this. Number 13, that's why we started looking at polygons. That's why I gave you guys the apothems. And I know in your notes, I gave you guys even triangles. I broke this into triangles. And then for this, I'm going to go one half times perimeter times apothem. So one half is just one half. For the perimeter, 
I'm just going to go 16 times 8. Okay, so each side is 16. There's eight sides. Since I'm going to type it in all, I'm just going to go 16 times 8. Right? That's the perimeter. And the apothem in this case is 19.3. And you should have 1235.2. One half times perimeter times the path. And I, once again, this point, you guys might be like, yeah, this is not bad. It's easy. Because this was going to help you guys big time for surface area. Anything up until 16? Any questions? Yeah, the number of sites times how many? Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Now let me skip to... Number 17, I noticed that the radius of the circle is 9, right? 9 is the radius of the circle. So I'm going to say the whole area of the circle is 81 pi. I'm going to make it into fractions, 81 pi. And then this, I'm going to multiply this by how much of the circle you have. We have 315 out of 360 degrees. If you have those calculators that can simplify the fraction, just multiply it and you're good. If you don't, then simplify your fraction. My fraction, let me divide each number by 9 to make this a little bit easier. Let me divide it by 9. So I have 35 on the top and 40 at the bottom. I divided each by 9. Then 35 over 40, I think we can still do better. All right, let me divide each by 5. So I'm going to call that 7 over 8. So as a matter of fact, let me write it over here. 81 pi over 1 times 7 over 8. That way it's easier for me to see. All right, that's what we have. If you can simplify diagonal, like 81 and 8, if you can, simplify it. If you can. In this case, we cannot. Like I said, if it's possible, do so. Now that I cannot simplify, I'm just going to multiply straight across. 81 times 7 gives me 567 pi. At the bottom, 1 times 8 gives me 8. Don't forget your pi on your answer. So 567 pi over 8. If you have those calculators that know how to simplify, then that's easier for you. And I see like a TI-30X. I see another TI-30X. So those, those know how to simplify. Any questions up until 20? Yes. 18? All right, looking at number 18, let's see. I know that radius is 15, and I know 15 squared is 225. So let me write this as 225 pi over 1. Multiply this by 270 over 360. When I'm simplifying my fractions, divide by, zero, by 10. That basically cancels the zeros. 27 over 36, let me divide each by 9, so I have 3 over 4. I know 3 and 225, I can probably divide each by 3, but I cannot simplify side to side, so I'm just going to multiply straight across. On the top, 225 times 3, that gives me 675 pi. At the bottom, 1 times 4 gives me 4. 
So I get 675 pi over 4. 225 times 3. Not side to side, because that's how we multiply. Remember, the only way we cannot simplify is the way we multiply. Since we multiply side to side, that's the only way we can add simplify. All right. Any other questions up until 20? Now, looking at number 21, find the surface area of each figure. And remember, for prisms, it's a big rectangle and two bases. When they're all rectangles, choose your base. You guys can see my base is going to be those. So my bases are two little squares. So in fact, I can easily get the area of the squared, right, 9 times 9. So I know each squared is 81. Right, just 9 times 9. Then for the big rectangle, I'm going to go 36 times 12. The 36, because that's the distance around the base, right? I added all the sides of the base. That's where I got the 36, and then the 12, you think you guys can see it. So 36 times 12 gives me 432. Add everything. 594. That's it. Don't forget that pyramids, like this is a prism, but pyramids, it's a base and a bunch of triangles. I think you guys should be good with those. Uh, cylinders, cones, all those. I didn't want to make the whole test just surface area. I wanted to make it everything, so that's why I included everything as well. And I think that everything else actually helps you on your score than just surface area. So, any questions?